Today we will talk about peptide bond. We know that uh, proteins are sequence of amino acids. They are also called polymers of amino acids. In protein sequence, uh, consecutive amino acids, they are joined together through a special covalent interaction, what we call peptide bond. This peptide bond is also known as amide bond, where two amino acids interact, amino terminal of an amino acid and uh, C terminal carboxyl group of another amino acid react together to form this special linkage. For example, if you look at this is C alpha atom, amino group, and C wedge group of one amino acid, you have R group here, hydrogen atom. Similarly, another amino acid. So these two amino acids react through C terminal, C terminal of one and N terminal of another amino acid which result into release of a water molecules is also dehydration synthesis reaction as a result of removal of the water molecule in this chemical reaction this special amide linkage is formed what is known as peptide bond so this bond CONH bond is called peptide bond and one water is related and this product is called dipeptide similarly uh, this COH group will react with the amino group of another further amino acid which give rise to another peptide bond and that will be called tripeptide so minimum dipeptide can exist when you talk about polymer of amino acids then you have tripeptide tetrapeptide and so on all the proteins they are polypeptide in nature they are a many number of peptide bonds depending on the protein size so this is special interaction is a result of dehydration it means if you look at the difference in molecular mass of this is a dipeptide and the constitu constituting amino acids if you take mass of this amino acid and this amino acid and join together it will be 18 less in case of the dipeptide it means because you are losing water molecule which mass is 18 dalton it means the cumulative mass of this dipeptide will be 18 less of the addition of this amino acid 1 and amino acid 2. So similarly if you have a say 100 amino acid long polypeptide or 100 amino acid long protein in that case you will have one less number of peptide bond it means in 100 amino acid long protein you will have 99 peptide bond and we know that each peptide bond is resulted due to release of one water molecule which is equal to 18 dalton so mass will be accordingly less uh, of the polypeptide in comparison to the constituting amino acids. So this peptide is basically this peptide bond which is formed here between two amino acids gives special features to the sequence to the polypeptides because initially when the bond is not formed amino acids they are single CHCN or CC bond they are free to rotate but, but when this peptide bond is formed it gives rigidity the freedom of amino acids is restricted. As a result, a protein acquires a specific shape in three-dimension space. That's what we understand in case of protein folding. So peptide bond uh, is basically CONH bond between two amino acids. And because the configuration of CO oxygen atom and NH group can have two possibilities, in one case, uh, CO and NH they can go in opposite direction in opposite planes that kind of a peptide bond is called transpeptide bond trans configuration of the peptide bond or CO and NH may lie in the same plane in the same side in that case you call it cis peptide bond in nature in proteins in more than 97 percent cases the peptide bond exists in trans configuration because this is more stable a cis configuration in cis configuration also less than three percent cases peptide bond exist in cis configuration but that's less stable and there are specific conditions for that so when you have trans configuration of peptide bond the angle defining peptide bond towards an angle called omega the omega bit angle between i mean the angle between cu and nh plane should be in opposite direction 180 degree so omega should be 180 degree in case of trans configuration when uh, you have cis configuration, CO and NH lie in the same plane, the value of omega would be zero. So cis configuration is not very much favored 
because when you have cis configuration, if you look at the R groups of two consecutive amino acids involving peptide bond formation, in case of trans, they are extended, they are lying in different plane, they are in opposite sides. So the possibility of hysteric clashes is minimal, is not possible in fact in trans configuration. When you have cis configuration, the R group, R group of two of my consecutive amino acids which are involved in peptide bond formation, uh, they have hysteric clashes, they come too close when peptide bond is formed. As a result, cis configuration is not found in case of all peptide bonds. So only amino acid where there is a missing side chain, for example, glycine. Glycine amino acid has no side chain, no R group. That's why glycine is one of the partners of a peptide bond where cis configuration exists in proteins. So it has to be glycine forming cis peptide bond, otherwise not possible. Or even proline also can be because in case of proline, the side chain is uh, basically fused with the main chain. So proline and glycine, they are commonly found. They are the only amino which are found in case of cis peptide bond formation in proteins. Peptide bond can be of two types. One is called eupeptide bond and another is isopeptide bond. In case of eupeptide bond, the main chain uh, COH group and main chain amino group of two amino acids join together to form peptide bond. Is called eupeptide bond, is also commonly simply known as peptide bond also. But in few cases, in uh, peptide bond formation, one of the amino acid is having side chain group involved in peptide bond formation. For example, in case of glutathione, where a carboxyl group of side chain of glutamic acid interact with the amino group of cysteine amino acid and to form a peptide bond, in such cases is called isopeptide bond. In glutathione is one example. Another example is in ubiquitin proteins. When protein has to be removed from the system, it should get covalently linked with ubiquitin protein. So ubiquitin protein, in case of ubiquitin protein also, glycine uh, uh, COH group react with the side chain of lysine of the target protein and resulting into the formation of isopeptide bond. So the formation of peptide bond is uh, ATP consuming. It is catalyzed by ribosome. We know the translation process where DNA is converted into messenger RNA in transcription and the messenger RNA is translated into protein sequence. So this process of a peptide bond formation in cell is catalyzed by ribosome and uh, it can be hydrolyzed also. Uh, hydrolysis of peptide bond can occur spontaneously as well, but that's a very slow process. Generally, uh, uh, uncatalyzed hydrolysis require more than 300 years uh, for uh, broken down of the peptide bond in presence of water. That's a very slow process, and this process can be uh, very rapid in presence of catalyst. And they are proteins which do this catalysis of a breakdown of peptide bone. You call them peptidases or proteases or proteinases. So as a result of hydrolysis of peptide bond, two amino acids, they are uh, separated. They are new N terminal and C terminal of the uh, peptide bond is formed. Amino acid is formed and that release around 2 to 4 kilocalorie per mole. Uh, the hydrolysis of the peptide bond. This peptide bond also absorb in UV range from 190 to 230 nanometer uh, and uh, it's a planar in nature, CO and NH group, they have some plane, they are in different planes, so in the same plane is planar, it's rigid, it's rigid because CO and NH is not, a, is not a single bond. If you see the peptide bond is CO and NH group, so the CN bond is not a single bond here, rather it has acquired a partial double bond character, around 40% double bond character is there in case of peptide bond. As a result of this partial double bond character, the distance, CN distance is reduced to 1.33 angstrom and it provides rigidity. The CN bond cannot rotate freely. That's why CN bond can have, this peptide bond can have only two possibilities of rotation. You call them uh, omega, it could be cis or trans, it's not free to rotate. So when peptide bond is formed, it provides rigidity to the uh, CC or CN single bonds existing in amino acids. So uh, CONH is a peptide bond, it's a rigid and planar structure.
So as a result of this peptide bond, if you look at the main chain atom, these are the main chain atoms of a polypeptide chain, dipeptide here in this case. So if you look at the rotation, which bonds are free to rotate? So there are only two bonds which can rotate freely. One bond is here between, this is C alpha atom of one amino acid and another amino acid. The C alpha and C, this CC single bond can rotate. The rotation of this bond is called psi. Similarly, in the next side of the peptide bond, this NC alpha bond, this also can have rotation and this N, uh, N, N, uh, C alpha and N rotation is denoted by to another torsion angle called phi. So there are two determinant of uh, secondary structure of a protein uh, in terms of dihedral angles. They are known by phi and psi and they are resulted because of formation of this rigid peptide bond only. And these phi psi are required in the case of adopting a specific secondary structure of the protein that we will discuss in the next lecture.